Your read on what's taking place in Europe right now. Access to vaccines, very high across the continent. There's a struggle at the moment and restrictions are coming back. What do you understand is happening at the moment in these nations? Yeah, you know, it's very difficult to, to, to really understand all of this because we've got cases in Germany, in Austria, that are higher than at any time in this pandemic, higher than before we had vaccines, before we had antivirals, before we even knew much about how this virus was transmitting. And the second thing is, remember, any anything that you implement now to reduce case numbers won't be seen for another seven to 10 days at least in terms of its effectiveness. So you've got a window of time now where these record numbers of cases are going to continue to climb for at least seven days, perhaps two weeks. And um, it, it's 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 can't be emphasized enough, primarily driven by unvaccinated, but we now really have to put boosters on the table to try to see if we can get protection in the vaccinated population to those 90 plus percent levels that we were hoping to see at the beginning of the pandemic or at the beginning of the vaccine rollout. Andy, what's the threshold to impose some of these stricter measures? The idea here of hospitalizations perhaps or deaths, but not necessarily infection rates. Yeah, the hospitalization number is really the critical number because, you know, there will be some breakthrough cases in vaccinated individuals, but those should really skew towards symptomatic diseases that aren't going to cause you to go to the hospital. So watching the hospitalization rate and how that tracks with the case numbers is going to be important. Here in the U.S., that has gone the, the hospitalization and, and um, death rates have been lower than the case rates now that we have vaccination out there, but we have to follow the hospitalization rate because that's going to be the one that really tells us about stresses on the medical system. Andy, I remember about a year ago, perhaps a little bit more, we got news that the vaccines were incredibly effective and would prevent both infection as well as uh, the actual development of more severe complications. Are we rethinking that? Are these vaccines not as, as effective as we thought that they were? The context of, of effectiveness is what's changed. And the emergence of Delta um, has really sort of caused us to reassess a lot of those initial uh, vaccination efficacy numbers. Now, with boosters coming on board, there's good evidence suggesting that boosters might be able to restore us to that 90 plus percent uh, efficacy because boosters, particularly if, you're, if they're being given six months or so after your initial vaccination, seem to be resulting in much, much higher antibody levels, and we assume that those levels will now last much longer. So now the game is changing a little bit. We're moving to that long-term immunity, and now boosters may be important for both getting greater short-term immunity and establishing that longer six-month, one-year immunity that will protect you uh, from COVID. Bill Gates uh, told our editor-in-chief, John Micklethwaite, yesterday at the New Economy Forum in Singapore that um, the evidence shows it's unlikely to mutate again to something worse. Of course it could happen, but we don't see that happening right now, Doc. And also that um, this could evolve into something that's um, much less fatal than a flu by next year. What do you think about those statements? Yeah, I, I would agree with both of those. Um, you know, I hesitate to ever predict what a virus is going to do because it really is almost unpredictable. But the vaccines for COVID-19 are honestly better than the vaccines we have for influenza. The antivirals for against COVID-19 are better than our antivirals against influenza. So everything on the table suggests that we should be able to control COVID-19 and get it to a place where it'll always be a threat, but it won't be a significant threat. But the critical thing is implementation. We have the tools. We have to use them effectively because if we don't use them effectively, we're still in the same situation that we were six months ago.